Hello and welcome to the Controller Chronicles HD. In this installment, I'm taking a second look at the NES Advantage, a joystick released by Nintendo in 1987 exclusively in North America and Europe. There is no Japanese Famicom counterpart of the NES Advantage. The NES Advantage um, mimics the appearance of an arcade control panel, something that was very common in the 80s. Arcades were always something that was ahead of consoles. They could do better graphics, you know, better sound, uh, more complex gameplay. Although a lot of the games that were designed in arcades were really meant to just steal your quarters and that was all they were for. When consoles um, started to become dominant, um, arcade manufacturers and game developers started to bring the arcade experience home as much as possible. And thus the um, market for home use arcade style joysticks was born. Joysticks have always been um, sort of the alternative to a standard controller. They work for certain types of games very well and they don't work for other type of games very well at all. Certain game types will much, or work much better with a standard D-pad than they do an arcade stick. But as such, the two have always uh, lived in sort of this harmony and there's still a market for both. And I don't think the market will ever disappear for either. Um, but the NES Advantage was born out of this desire to bring the arcade experience to the home, and it did so by mimicking the appearance of an arcade panel as much as possible, but there's a lot of things that, that you should know about the NES Advantage. For one thing, it only mimics the appearance of an arcade uh, control panel. It doesn't actually mimic the feel of an arcade panel, and that's because this thing is basically an oversized um, handheld controller. It's not really an arcade stick at all. Um, I'll go over the features and show you what I mean. First of all, the joystick on the NES Advantage, although it's fairly good and you know responsive and all, this is essentially a D-pad just with an elongated um, you know rod in the middle uh, that is spring-loaded um, that allows you to depress um, the same kind of um, copper um, button presses that you use on a standard D-pad. You have your up, down, left, and right. This is not micro-switch based, and as such, uh, it doesn't wear out nearly as fast as micro-switches would, and it doesn't click. And there's no uh, gate on here whatsoever, so you can swing it all in, in 360 degrees, and it's just a D-pad, essentially. It's the same thing with the B and A buttons. Um, although they are oversized, they are essentially exactly the same thing as you'd get on the NES 004 controller. Um, that's the standard rectangle thing. Here, you just press the buttons, and that's all there is to it. However, the buttons have a bit of a problem. For one thing, you can actually um, press the buttons on the very edges and then get the buttons stuck. By doing that, you can actually have the buttons um, not come back to their default position, and then when the buttons get stuck, uh, you might not be able to fire, or you might not be able to, to block, or you know, you might get hit and die, and it won't be your fault because the damn button got stuck. It happens with the B and A buttons, so it's not like you can use one or the other, so you have to use both, you know. Um, but in addition to that, it has a number of cool features that are really unique about the NA's advantage. For one thing, it has these turbo fire buttons. Um, once enabled, you have a little LED here and here that shows up um, when the button is depressed. And above that, you have two potentiometers that um, basically control the turbo fire rate. You can adjust this to be whatever you want. If you have it real low, um, this will be maybe like one or two shots per second. And then you, when you have it up real high, it will go up to about 16 shots per second. Um, adjusting the rate of fire to um, which, whatever fire rate you want is actually something that's really unique about the, anti any, about the NES Advantage and um, has its advantages over um, other uh, turbo fire controllers that don't offer this ability. This ability is decent because um, different games will respond to fire rates at different um, rates, really. Um, what I mean by that is that um, some games will... Uh, you know, will respond well at very high fire rates, such as like a shooter, and other types of games will respond well at very low fire rates, um, turbo fire rates, um, such as an RPG or something like that. So it depends on the type of game that you're playing, and that's something that I really like about the NA's Advantage. 
Another thing that's kind of neat about it is it has a turbo start button. That's what's known as a slow button here. Um, this does not have a potentiometer um, for this, but basically the way this works is you press this and enable it down, and it's basically pressing start over and over and over and over. And that's useful for early Famicom games. Um, I know it works for Kung Fu very well. It works for, um, you know, a number of spaceship shooters. Um, but later Famicom games and NES games um, don't really respond well to Turbo Start because most of the time um, it, when you press Start, it won't simply pause the game but bring up some sort of menu or it might make an audio sound effect um, to let you know that the game is paused. It'll go like do 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 or something, you know. Um, so when you have it Turbo enabled, it'll go do 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 do, you know, etc. etc. And it ends up getting really annoying. Um, but really, that's optional. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. Uh, it has the start and select buttons, just as you normally expect. And another thing it has is a player 1 and 2 switch. And the reason for that is because the NES Advantage has actually two controller ports here. Um, the reason it has two is because you can simply plug this into both controller ports and then use one NES Advantage um, for alternating um, games that, like Super Mario Brothers, when player 1 would play as Mario and player 2 would play as Luigi. When player 1 would die, um, they'd switch... Uh, they'd, they'd, the game would go to Luigi, and then they'd simply switch this to player two, hand off the joystick to the second player, and the same and the second joystick, uh, the second player would use the same joystick. So this prevented um, parents from having to buy two of these things. The NES Advantage was not a cheap joystick when it was first released. Um, this thing was about eighty dollars, so keep that in mind um, back in the day. Um, the NES Advantage has. You know, it's iconic, but I don't really think that it's really the greatest joystick out there. Especially because it's not very mod friendly either. So, I don't like really the joystick or the buttons, but because the NES Advantage is so shallow, there is nowhere for you to mod in um, real um, micro switch based controls. To do that, you'd have to elongate the ends um, here to make it less about like, mm, I don't know, about that deep. Um, but even if you could do that, the potentiometers and such are all surface mounted, um, which means that the PCB is almost directly below the, um, the, the panel here. And as such, this thing makes it extraordinarily difficult to mod. I've looked into it, I've thought about it, but overall, I just don't really like the NES Advantage that much. I think that it has some unique features, I think it's very iconic, but it's not really a great joystick, I have to be honest. So yeah, that will be basically do it for this video. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, once again, I'll see you next time. So this is Satoshi Matrix signing out.